If you have a hyperthyroid cat, you're entering a pretty crazy world. It's a roller coaster ride unlike any you've ever been on for at least the first two or three months. The good news is there are things you can do to help your cat and eventually things do settle down into a more normal routine. Even though I suppose using the word normal where cats are concerned is pretty absurd. In this video I'm going to give you some tips for using the ear gel, the transdermal medication, and cleaning your cat's ears. Talk about what you need for each step and at the end of the video we'll bring in Lancelot and show you how we do it here. I hope it helps. How often you'll need to clean your cat's ears varies. That's something you're going to have to work out between you and your cat. But if you're using the transdermal gel, you will have to clean those ears from time to time. Even the best base does build up a little bit, and eventually that'll block the absorption of the medicine, and it'll cause a crusty, red, scratchy ear that's going to give your cat problems. And I think it's uh, kind of better to prevent that. So what are the easy methods? Well, you're going to need something soft and something with a lot of coverage. A paper towel has good coverage, but it's not nearly soft enough. Q-tip, cotton swab, <laughs> it's soft, but it has lousy coverage. Best thing I've found is just a good cotton ball, or, you know, even half a cotton ball. It's soft, it's got good coverage, <laughs> and it's inexpensive. Now what you use to clean the ears, well, there are a lot of choices. The main thing is make sure that it's something gentle. Now of course, <laughs> the gentlest is water. And you may be able to get by just using water. Some people clean their cat's ears every day with water, clean one ear, and then apply medicine to the other ear, and yeah, then later that day, reverse it. But well, water doesn't really seem to do quite a good enough job. So every now and then you probably will need to use something just a little bit stronger. Most basic thing for that is witch hazel. Now witch hazel does have 14% alcohol as a preservative and if you use it too often that's likely to dry out the cat's ears. But the witch hazel itself is a good astringent. It's actually good for the skin. Personally I just use the witch hazel once every three days and that's been good enough for us but we're on a fairly low dose so you'll have to work it out. Now if you find that the ears are getting a little bit red that's normal when you start. Yeah, the ears do kind of have to adjust but if the redness gets worse or doesn't go away then you have to consider whether or not uh, there's a reaction to the medicine or are you just cleaning too much and too hard? And that's really what happens more often. So go easy on the cleaning. Relax and don't push it. And be sure to treat this as a special time, a good time. You're not giving your cat a medical treatment. You're just doing some grooming. You're the alpha cat. And treat it as a positive thing. You know, speak softly, give the cat treats, you know, don't get nervous. Because the more you worry and get nervous, the more it upsets your cat. But if you approach it in a positive way, you'll find that even cats who are very touchy about their ears can not only tolerate this, but actually start to look forward to it. Now, if you decide to use water, please start with warm water. It'll cool off by the time you get to your cat, but it's still going to be a nicer sensation for the cat rather than uh, maybe some cold tap water, especially on a day like we have here when it's 15 degrees and the tap water is pretty darn cold. So whatever you're using, be sure to get enough onto your cotton, but you don't want any of the liquid running down into the ear canal. So Squeeze it out, damp, not wet. Now you're ready to go find your cat.
Now you're likely to get your transdermal gel in a syringe, like one of these. Now this is a 0.5 milliliter syringe. This is a 1 milliliter syringe. It's not really important which one you get unless one happens to fit your hand better than the other. Now also, you need to be aware of the strength of the medication. And someplace on there, you're likely to see something like this. Notice where it says methamazole 2.5 milligrams per 0.1 milliliter. That's the strength of the medication, so you'll know how much medicine you're giving. You're also going to need some of these finger cuts. It's the easiest way to put the medicine on. You just slide the little finger cut over your finger, put the medicine there, rub on the cat's ears. You'll see that in the video later. Some people do have a little trouble controlling the dose coming out of the syringe. Now that's partly because every now and then the syringes do stick. You'll just have to get used to that. Maybe once every month or two it's going to happen regardless of how careful you are. But as with everything, there are some tricks to it. I think most people find it, you know, <laughs> well more natural to hold a syringe this way. But with these, if you hold it against the palm of your hand, remove the cap, and then you can hold it with both hands, still be able to get close enough to read the numbers, and give out a very measured dose by pushing with the palm, not with the thumb. Give it a try. Now we're just going to rub that ear. We're going to rub it, not scrub it. Uh -huh. Make sure you don't squeeze so hard that you make the liquid go down into the ear canal. Yeah. That can cause a lot of rubbing and head shaking and oh, just all sorts of things. And every once in a while, bend that over, take a good look, and clean the places that we missed. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. And it's still just a nice, friendly sort of massage. Uh huh. Yeah. Because Lance is such a good cat. Mm hmm. Now, while we're here. Let's go ahead and apply the meds there to your other ear. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay, just slip on that finger cut. Yeah. Okay. Get just the right amount of med. And then again, just rub it right there on the flat inner ear. Not going down into the canal. No, we don't go there. Not unless we really have to for some reason. Yeah. And again, just a massage. You're not doing something mean. No, you're being friendly. Yeah. Check, make sure you don't have any medicine left on the finger cot. Yeah. Okay. And now, it's treat time. <laughs> yeah, it's treat time. Uh-huh. You know it's treat time, don't you? Okay. Have some. <laughs> 